Hello guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. In this video, we are going to cover the precision handling. Let's get started. So in today's video of precision handling, we are going to cover pad to pad. The other two that are present, we will cover in the next video so we can keep the video short and very simple to understand, right? So, under this we are going to cover the thumb, the finger, what is its job and then other stabilizing structure. That's how the, it's going to be divided into three parts, okay? So, let's have a look. So, if you can see over here, the blue part is talking about the finger, the purple is the thumb and the stabilizing structures that will contribute to both of these, right? So that's how we are going to cover this precision handling. So starting with your pad to pad, it covers around 80%. That means 80% of your precision handling is pad to pad type. And over here when I say pad or pulp of the thumb, it means basically this finger, like if you can see this fleshy part, right, that is present, that is your pad to pad. And how it looks, you can see over here, I'm holding and the pad is getting attached right tip would look something like this but pad this is how it does and the thumb opposes the finger and that's how you get this precision grip okay so under this if you are using two fingers this is called as two jaw chuck and if you are using three it's called as three jaw chuck so those are the two types but we are going to just focus on two jaw chuck okay so let's go ahead over here, what do we see? The first thing that is seen is DIP. You can see over here, this is the DIP and DIP is either completely extended or slightly flexed. If it's extended, that means flexor digitorum superficialis is working more. As we have seen in the previous video, when DIP flexion is happening, it's profundus. If it's not happening, it's superficialis. And if it's slightly flexed, flexor digitorum profundus activity might be seen, right? So that is the first thing. Next, the intrinsic muscles are active, okay? And there are two ways in which they are active. That is a synergistic contraction and a reciprocal contraction. Synergistic will happen when it is a static phase and the reciprocal will happen when there is a dynamic phase. Let's have a look at this. So if you take the finger and you are holding it this way, if it's just a static hold, that means the intrinsic muscles are working together to hold that position but you are doing some movement like this okay that means there is abduction adduction happening and for that movement the intrinsic muscles like your volar interosia and dorsal interosia they'll work in such a way that they'll fight each other there is a reciprocal contraction for abduction adduction and other movements and that's how the movement will be happening at the fingers with your intrinsic muscles right dynamic versus static the type of muscle activity will be different synergistic or reciprocal now coming to the previous point of your flexion another thing that you have to notice is when i'm holding a pen or anything like that as the flexion is improving or increasing at the dip joint at one finger it will also increase at the other finger and the force that is put on the finger will start moving distally right see it's proximal now and as i increase the flexion it goes more distal right the pressure goes more distal compared to this so as the flexion of one finger increases it is proportionally increasing on the other side and over here as the flexion is improving the flexor digitorum profundus will start acting more and over here at the thumb it will be flexor pollicis longus right these will be the muscles that will be acting as the flexion of the DIP joint and over here IP joint is increasing. So that's what we have under our finger. Now if we move to the thumb, thumb first we'll talk about the CMC position that is the carpo metacarpal joint and then MCP position. So if you look at the CMC joint over here and if you take the position always when you are, whenever you are writing an answer for this kind of topic, you just take the position and then you observe and notice what is the positioning of each joint so over here i can see when i'm writing there is some amount of flexion right there is abduction and slightly rotation so together it's an opposition movement at the cmc joint 
and at MCP joint there is also some slight amount of flexion. So let's have a look at that. So as I mentioned here at CMC there is this whole opposition movement and at MCP and IP they are either slightly flexed right or fully extended. So if you can see over here the IP and the MCP there is slight flexion that is present right. So this position is achieved with the thenar muscle activity and which thenar muscles are active? All of them. So all thenar muscles are active that includes opponents, flexa pollicis brevis and abductor pollicis brevis. All of these muscles are supplied by your median nerve, right? The median nerve supplies these muscles and apart from that there is also another important muscle that is the adductor pollicis which is supplied by ulnar nerve and if the ulnar nerve is injured it can reduce the precision or it can make your grasp less stable. So these are your thenar muscles right almost all of them are supplied by median except one ulnar which creates that adduction so if that is lost or if that is not possible the grip will become slightly less stable right because of this muscle not working. So that's what we have under the thumb. Now let's look at the stabilizing structures. So under stabilizing structures we have a wrist which is slightly, slightly in extension. You can see over here the wrist is in slight extension and with that there is also radial or ulnar deviation which will depend from person to person and different types of grips and apart from that there has to be this extensor activity of extensor pollicis longus at the thumb so that the opening is possible so that you can leave the object right and also some amount of manipulation so that's why the extensor activity is required so that's all we have for this video now let's quickly summarize the topic so what did we see in pad to pad which is seen in 80 percent the there are two jaw chuck and three jaw chuck variation in two jaw chuck you can see the finger is slightly flexed or extended and that will determine what muscle activity is seen either it is flexor digitorum profundus or superficialis. Under intrinsic muscles we have the synergistic and reciprocal activity of the intrinsic muscles based on the task that they are given. If it's static it will be they'll work together in co-contraction if it's manipulation or moving the object they'll work with a reciprocal activity. Under thumb we saw they are in flexion, abduction, rotation position that is basically opposing the other finger and this activity is achieved by all the thenar muscles along with adductor which is supplied by ulnar nerve. Rest are supplied by median nerve, right? The thenar muscles. And then finally the stabilizing structure that is the wrist which is in extension and slight amount of ulnar or radio deviation and some amount of extensor activity of extensor pollicis longer especially to open the finger over here and leave the object right so with that we finish off this topic next video will be about the other precision grips so stay tuned for that thank you for watching